Hello you guys, how are you? I hope you are staying well and staying healthy and taking your vitamin D3. My name is Joni, welcome to my channel Joni Loves. Please before we go and hit that subscribe button and that bell, that would be so cool. So today I'm excited because we're going to chat about Rosie Huntington Whiteley's go to bed um, routine, skincare routine that she did for Harper's Bazaar recently. This is one beautiful English actress and model she's 33 um, she's also um, starred in the transformers movie in 2011 dark of the moon and then in mad max the, the latest one was it 2015 yes so she's an interesting choice of movies but this woman has modeled for everybody she's just stunning and had lots of front covers so she really knows how to portray herself this woman let's see how she does with her skincare routine and see what Joni thinks Mm -hmm. So I've got my towel, I'm going to run the sink full of some lukewarm water and I'm going to use this exfoliating cleanser from Zo Skin Health. So this is for normal to oily skin which is probably how I would describe my skin. It's sort of combination. I often find I'm sort of dry in some areas and then oilier in other areas. I have acne prone skin and I have to tell you that the Zo Skin Health products are just incredible if you have any kind of skin issues or, or particularly acne. So this is an exfoliating cleanser. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like, but it is a sort of gel and it has these kind of beads in it that burst once you start to rub it into the skin. Just softening the skin. Ooh. And then taking a sort of pea-sized amount of the cleanser. And usually in the evenings, I like to do a double cleanse. And I really like to spend a couple of minutes doing this. And now I'm gonna rinse it all off. Ah, see, found some makeup that had gotten hidden under my neck. Hmm, so first things first. Okay, I do think she is amazing. Look at those cheekbones. And she says she's got a combination oily prone to acne skin type. So we have to bear all that in mind when we're looking at the products she's using. She's going first of all with this cleanser, Zo Skin Health Exfoliating Cleanser. Um, Zaino Badji, he's you know, a really well-known, world-renowned dermatologist. Joni has met him. Yes, I have and talked to him for quite some time. Anyway, that's my wee claim to fame. Just thought I'd chuck it in there. He, this cleanser, I'm going to say, right, is uh, 43 quid and not cheap, okay, for normal to oily skins. Um, it's expensive and I'm looking at the ingredients and I will tell Sign the next time I speak to him about this. The first ingredient is always water, right? But then we've got sodium laureth sulfate soap, uh-huh. Um, which is okay for her skin, it is, it's fine for Rosie. And um, we've got um, fifth ingredient, humectant, glycerine, which is great. And then we got all the way down to its number 13 ingredient when it's really the first really, really great ingredient. Glycerine's good, but now we get to niacin, which is great for skin repairing, great for her skin. It sort of normalizes, reduces the pore size, nor, you know, makes the texture look good. Great for all that, for aging and spotty skins. It's a great ingredient. And then we go down to number 15 ingredient is salicylic acid. Great again, because remember, BHA, salicylic acid, is going to clean out the pore and stop the pores from blocking up. So it's great for our acne. It's got vitamin E in it. And then we've got perfume in it. And, you know, that's the one thing that's spoiled a bit for me. So it's got perfume in it. Not great. Don't like it. Especially, there's no need for it. Niacinamide, um, the next ingredient. And then we've got colouring agents in it. So really, I'm going to be honest, okay? I think there's maybe three ingredients in this out of quite a lot that I think are really good, but not as good as people think this. It's not, it's not. And I think that I could definitely recommend a better one for Rosie. <laughs> you know, I would definitely be putting some glycolic acid in that as well, in that cleanser. We then could be talking about maybe it's a bit better, but... Let's go on. I did think it was great. She said she rolled out the face cloth in lukewarm water. That's great. And she took it off and she double cleansed. I thought she was really quite gentle. I did like the jojoba beads in it. I thought that was great because they do not tear the skin surface. So I do like that. Um, and what I was going to think is, why is she not doing her neck? Hmm? Now, Rosie's 33, it's not really got to her yet and she's got a beautiful, you know, these models all have these long necks, don't they? 
try to stretch mine a bit here. But um, I think that that's a bit that missed for me. I do like her gym jams are really cute, but I do like to see them doing their neck because she's teaching us what she doesn't, you know, she should be teaching us really let's do it 100% properly. So just saying, Rosie. I'm so now taking a dry body towel. I just like to pat my skin dry really quickly. Next step, I am going to use my Cosmetic Mystic Hydrating Treatment. This is an AM PM Hydrating Mist and it really provides like a lightweight sort of hydration, but it's got a lovely tingling effect to it as it has um, a little bit of lactic in it, I think which again is great for my skin. Any kind of AHAs are really good for my skin, as I mentioned, because I have acne prone skin and really good for people with oily skin or breakout prone skin. So I'm using a reusable cotton pad. And again, just sort of pushing instead of wiping, just to bring that circulation into the face and not to drag your skin too much. And this also will help remove any kind of residue of the cleanser. So once I finish that, the next step I... <laughs> oh, I'm laughing because um, this, I don't see the lactic in it that Rosie thinks is in it. No, Cosmetics Mystic Hydrating Treatment. What a name, Cosmetics Mystic Hydrating Mystic. Mm -hmm. This is an expensive toner <laughs> and I don't like this because it's got witch hazel is the first ingredient, not, you know, witch hazel is sensitizing and to most people that use it. I'm going to say that first of all, then it's got alcohol. So that's, you know, first of all, we've got astringent, which is, can be sensitizing to most skins. Then we've got a drying alcohol, alcohol in it. That's not good. Don't like that. It then it's got, you know, fourth ingredient glycerine okay and then it's got which i think is good a good high you know polyhydroxy acid so that's another exfoliating type thing in this it's quite good um you know it's got vol volatile plant oils that i go on about there's a few of them crikey mikey there is i think i can see four but it's got you know aloe you know aloe the moisturizer it's got the the powder in that so that's hydrating um, but wait a wee minute here. This has got, this is great. This is a good one. Cassia angustifolia seed polysaccharide. That's an alternative to hyaluronic acid. And that's from the Senna plant. And that's an antioxidant emollient. And that's near the end of this ingredient. Mm, so talking about leaving the, the good ingredient till near the end of the bottle or the end of the ingredient list. I don't like that. And it's got perfumes in it again. I don't like the perfumes in it. So... What am I going to say? I'm going to say to her, she thinks it's hydrating and it's, this could definitely be sensitizing. Why I was laughing was because if you check her eyes out, I'm just pointing this out, her eyes look quite here and here, especially the left hand one. There's a bit of sensitivity going on here and she put that pad, albeit it's, a, it's one you can use again, she put that pad with these drying alcohol type things and astringents close to her eyes. No, 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 don't do that. Please don't do that. I don't like that being done. No, that's sensitized. So I would say this is full of dry and sensitized ingredients. And the only thing is cosmetics is cruelty free and paraben free. But I don't think this is a great thing for her to use. No, I don't think she needs to use it after that cleanser. No, no, no. Sorry, Rosie. What I actually like to do, and I only learned this recently, is to apply my eye cream first. One of the things that I think we often do is apply our eye cream actually last, or at least that's what I was doing. And just to protect the eye area, because I'm going to apply some retinol and some actives afterwards, you just want to make sure that you kind of create that barrier with a bit of an eye cream first, because you just don't want any of your actives going up too close to the eye. So this is a Shani Darden Intensive Eye Renewal Cream. This is actually really new. Shani has been a facialist um, that I've seen in LA for, oh my gosh, she must be going on like seven or eight years now. Um, and she's a good friend of mine and I absolutely love her products. She really has helped to change my skin over the years. Um, so if you're ever in LA and you're looking for an amazing facialist, definitely recommend her. I'm just gonna apply this lightly to the eye area using my middle finger or ring finger. 
So it's got a really lovely, thick, indulgent feel to this cream, but it absorbs really quickly. So you're not rubbing for too long. So I've done... Mm, I like that. I like that she what she said there. So listen up, Shani Darden Skincare Intensive Eye Renewal Cream. Um, that was applied quite well. Mm -hmm. She did go over the sensitivity bit here that I did see. I was so glad about that. And I, I absolutely agree that you should put on your eye cream first and then you're active. So that was good. And I think Shani may have told her that. And if I'm ever in Ellie, I am going to look you up, Shani, because you've trained her well. That's really good. Um, what I didn't like was, I think you've got to be really careful when you put an eye cream, okay? That you don't want to cause sensitivity. And really, I'm okay with it being put here. Okay, but the movement of your eye pulls the cream down, so I wouldn't be put it. I thought she put it a bit close to the lid, and that would be close to the hairs, the eyelashes, and that can cause sensitivity. So just watch out. But really, really good the way, with the way she was talking about it and applying it first. Joni agrees with that. Ding ding. So what's in this? There is good emollients. There really is good emollients, and there's shea butter, moisturising, really good antioxidants. Oh, I like this. I do like this. So. There's antioxidants, fatty alcohols, emollient skin replenisher, humectant. Oh my goodness, skin repair and niacinamides in it as well. And a good, you know, this is good. Am I thinking this might be my favourite product? So we've got Albizia, um, Julie Brisson Bark Extract, which is antioxidant. Uh, Dar Darutuoside, which is anti-inflammatory. Oh, uh -huh, great. Um, I really like this. And then we come down to... Um, olive fruit oil, you know, from olive oil, that's great, great antioxidant. And phytoesterols or phytor, phytosterols, I always get mixed up when I say that, but that is really, it's like cholesterol, it's really the best emollient type thing for your skin because it's very easy for the skin to absorb. And squalene, which is antioxidant and moisturising, brilliant. Ceramide, ah, oh, I do like this. And vitamin E, oh my goodness, I'm going on about this eye cream. This has got to be my... So far, so far, my favourite product, £62 for 15 mil. It's not cheap, but the list of good ingredients is far outweighs anything. There's nothing I can see that would me off this. No, there isn't. So, oh, trust me to like when it's 62 quid. Mm. <laughs> my um, eye cream. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, my Environ gold roller so this is sort of an at-home micro needling tool and just very gently i like to pull back my skin from the ear and up from the top of the cheekbone and obviously this is creating sort of very minute little punches to the skin which is really going to help any product that i put on afterwards absorb and i find that this just makes my skin so dewy and radiant the next day. I don't know what it does, but it's incredible. So I would like to concentrate on the forehead anywhere that I might have any fine lines beginning to show. Let's just stop there. Um, I am not for doing this microneedling at home. I'm sorry if I've annoyed anyone out there, but I really, I, I've... I've had too many experiences with clients who have done it and I'm not happy about it. Um, if you get, if I had a client that I, I knew that I'd really trained to use it properly and, you know, taught her how to use it, I'm just thinking. But generally speaking, I'm not happy about derma rolling. It's called microneedling or derma rolling. I do this treatment myself on clients but I would not advocate it. This needle and this, the needles around this, and um, when they're rolled over the skin, puncture the skin. It causes a couple of things. Is when you do that in a salon type clinic, um, I'm, it's a brilliant treatment. It really is because you do put little puncture holes in it. It helps actually as well. It breaks up dead skin on the outside surface, so it helps dead skin to come off. So it does have that. And remember what I'm always saying, when you get dead skin off, new skin's coming up underneath so it helps definitely that it's great for stimulating collagen getting blood flow to the skin especially for if you've got any clients or anybody that's got it's still smoking it's, it's it's sometimes really good for them but it's not good for the majority of skins that are sensitized that get broken capillaries and um, you really got to be careful who you do this treatment on and she has got this um 
combination skin rosy so it'll be a bit more thicker a bit the texture will be a bit like that that she can get away with it but i'm going to tell you just now i am not keen on you doing this as an at-home treatment because if you do it incorrectly um if you go you know one thing she did she did brace i thought that was great she braced so she was doing that bit right but you know so many people will do this treatment at home and it will create these little holes in their skin they might annoy some of their broken capillaries but then if they put something in it on on top of that after they've done the treatment that goes right into skin and it's not the correct serum or it's something that's too strong that will make the skin sensitive i'm just against anything you can do that can damage your skin so please Please, if you're thinking about this, speak to your local master esthetician before you buy one of these, please. And that's all I'm going to say, but be very careful about these. For, I don't know, going on eight years now, actually, I actually think Shani was the first person to put me onto retinol. Recently, I've been using this one from Medicaid. This is a brand out of the UK. I have seen so many people talk about this retinol and it really is beautiful because it's very, very gentle has a lovely creamy like texture to it. So I like to use just a small amount. If you haven't used retinol before that you probably want to do is build up to it. So you wanna start by just using it once a week and then gradually build up to a couple of times a week or every other night. And then really you wanna be using it every night. I think oftentimes people are a bit nervous about retinol because it can leave your skin really dry if you sort of delve into it too quickly. But retinol, again, for me, really helps with any kind of acne marks or, or scars that I have left over, fine lines that are beginning to show, and just general kind of evenness and tone across my skin. Mm, so that is interesting. So she's done the derma rollering or the microneedling and she's put in a retinol on top. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Medicaid are retinoate youth activating cream. It's vegan friendly and it's paraben free. Two good things. 135 quid for 50 mils it's not cheap no nope, it's not so what's in it um well i'm having a look here at the there's quite a few ingredients and there is what what let's say there's nothing really fantastic and uh, well polyhydroxy lactic acid is number four so i can handle that it's good that's good that's good um and then we come down to number 10 is um vitamin e yeah 11 sodium hyaluronic hyaluronic acid good great but it's putting itself off as being retinol um, but it's not till number 14 ingredient 14th ingredient uh -huh, but it's got retinol retinoate, retinoate which is a good form of retinol delivering skin repairing and skin rejuvenating so yeah it's good but it's number 14 ingredient 14th and yet it's saying it's that's what it's that's what it's a retinol youth activating cream it's got vitamin c in it next which is good um glycerine hydrating and it's got um canola oil that's fine and i think it's okay i think it's an okay product i just think it's a bit funny that it's number 14 before you get to the retinol you know and um, so it's to me that's ex this is too expensive where where the formulation has been made 135 quid it's too expensive for where the retinol comes in in the list just saying so no i wouldn't be recommending this one i wouldn't there's better ones out there that are cheaper there is um again um she did her face fine i think all which didn't just use a little amount and what she said rosie was right you really have to be careful when you start using a retinol i really prefer you only using it in the evening so your nighttime skincare routine okay i prefer you doing that and never ever never ever forget if you're using retinol at night you must wear an spf during the daytime to go together okay and what else yeah build up use once a week then twice a week just making it your skin get used to it um but this one really um it's a bit expensive for what it's saying another zo skin health product this is the daily power defense and this has replaced moisturizer for me so i don't use a traditional moisturizer anymore in my routine I use this, I think really they sort of describe it as a serum, even though it does really feel like a moisturiser. And again, this has um, some amazing actives in it, such as glycolic, which are really good for my skin. Just helping with that resurfacing and that cell turnover. Because I have acne prone skin, what I've learned is that my cell turnover is a little bit lethargic. 
And so any kind of actives, retinols are really gonna help with that. And since using these products, I've definitely found that my congestion is much more managed. So that's interesting, isn't it? So she's she's put a retinol on, she's done, um, and then she's put on something with glycolic acid. <clears throat> I do think it's probably in the right way that she's done that, putting the retinol on first and then this. I do think that's right. Um, I know where she's done this for Harper's Bazaar would have definitely layered it and let it sink in a bit longer before applying the next one. I like to give your creams enough time to, when you're layering them in the evening especially, to really get the full use that they're working. Let them absorb really well first before you put the next layer on. So, you know, a good few minutes. This one here, um, the Zoe Skin Health Daily Power Defense is 50 mils for 70 quid. Again, not cheap. It's cruelty free, which is great. And looking down this, it's got nice emollients, humectants, skin replenishers, fatty alcohols, which is great. And ha again, this is something that's going to, I'll need to talk to Zyma Badgie. <laughs> this is, I don't, I'm not going to even count this, but the retinol is right way down in, you know, really down in the list of ingredients. So um, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But what is annoying? Oh, here, this is a good one. It's got mouse ear cress, okay, which is interesting. Arabidopsis thaliana extract, which is mouse ear cress. Why do they have these really hard to pronounce names when they can just say, well, mouse ear cress? That's much easier, isn't it? This is a plant extract that sees the damage in your skin and then puts the systems and it's almost saying, right, this is how you fix this and it directs the skin how to fix itself. I like that, I like that. So that's in that, but again, halfway down the list, not, not great for me. And then we've got, oh goodness, here we go again, and um, with Zoe Skin Health, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bad volatile type plant oils. Um, now, you know, I have listened to Zaino Baji talk, I've, been to his um, seminars and sat in the front row actually and questioned him you can imagine can't you and I'm really I know that he really wants to uh, fix skin and that's what he's talking about when he's given he's talking about what you do to for aging skin and for acne skin and really that's the type of skins that he focuses on but he's putting in things that probably won't aggravate a thickened skin type which Rosie's saying that she's got she's just mentioned it there her skin doesn't renew quickly but these types of um, volatile oils will definitely aggravate other people they they will so I'm not I'm not keen on this at all um, and then we've got the bottom which I think is great near the bottom of the ingredient list again crikey Mikey palmitol tripeptide one which is skin restoring it's really good two palmitol tripeptides they're great but it's too late in the formula you know and another retinal palmitate great but where the come in the list of ingredients you know it's you know it's not that great it really isn't so I will be talking to this man when I see him again or he'll he'll be like that <laughs> missing me out if he hears me talking about him like this so here we go with really hydrated lips this is the youth lip elixir from is clinical another incredible brand that I've been using for many years now and what I love about this is that you go to bed with it on you wake up and your lips are just so lovely and hydrated it's sort of like a kind of overnight treatment lip mask and i love that it's not too shiny or sticky and it's going to get stuck on your pillow and just leaves your lips looking really plump and even i'm going to take out my hair and what I like. so i think we'll stop it there <laughs> and just talk about this is um is clinical youth lip elixir 52 pounds for a lip elixir it's 52 pounds for that little thing <laughs> but hey look the first ingredient cocoa butter extremely moisturizing second ingredient vitamin c third ingredient hyaluronic acid my goodness and then we've got a whole blend of great enzymes that protect from environmental damage i'm really loving this and then we've got again ultra filling spheres but i think this is great the way that um, the company's market stuff but i love this ultra filling spheres with fatty alcohols skin replenishers hyaluronic acid 
and a prebiotic which feeds the skin with hydration. It's so good that. Then vitamin E, shea butter. Oh my goodness. Palmatoid tripeptide one. Again, a skin restorer I mentioned again. Oh, this is great. Wow. I really, really, really like this. It's 52 quid. Oh my goodness. Um, I really like that. I really do. Do I think it's expensive? I do. <laughs> But it's got, uh, it's got brilliant, brilliant ingredients in it. Uh -huh. So to me, um, I think she's going along the right, the right roads, okay? Rosie's going along the right thought processes of what ingredients to look for. I, I just think there's a couple in there that really we could get diff a diff better brand for her. <laughs> um, I did love the Shani Darden Eye Intensive Cream. Will that be my favourite or will it be this Youth Elixir? Both are expensive. Oh my goodness. Both are expensive. I thought they were really good. Um, I think it's great that she's using retinol for her skin type. And I'm going to say this. If you've got this thickened skin combination skin prone to acne flare outs. I definitely do recommend that you look at retinol. Remember retinol was really um, discovered in the 1970s. Specifically for treatment for acne. So she's got it right there. She's a great looking woman. I love those cheekbones. I wish she had done her neck. I do. I wish she'd done her neck. That would have been better for me there. Mm -hmm. So she's on the right roads using retinol. She's talking about AHAs for her skin. She's thinking about the skin renewal. I do like that. She's on the right roads. Just if you get a hold of her, get her to give me a wee ring. That would be good. So I hope that was interesting for you. Um, I think it's always great to do these reaction videos that celebs um, go and they, you know, they tell you what they're using and half of it is, are they getting paid to say that by the company? You're always thinking that, aren't you? Um, is this just another marketing tool? I don't know. But anyway, it's always really such a good laugh to see what they're doing. Please have a great week. And thank you for watching this video to the end. I really appreciate it. And please, if you really can share that this with someone, that, that would be good. Um, so take care. See you next week. Bye.